This is Don't Panic, episode number 319, recorded August 30th, 2021. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I'm Sean Jennings, joined, as always, by two guys who I'd call Category 5 friends, it's Dan Miller and Colby Rabideau. Good evening, gentlemen. I literally thought of that on the fly. I was I was ill-prepared and... Um, uh, that's a rare win, so I'll take it. <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, it feels nice to be back here all together. I feel yes. Like it's been a, it's been a good long time. It has. It's been like another three weeks, right? Or something like that. Two weeks. It's, it's been a little while for sure. Yeah. We made it, you know? So a, a while ago, maybe not a while ago, probably was a while ago, I picked Honest Networks, my ISP. And I don't remember if I said this at the time, but one of the reasons why I do like them is because when they have had an issue, and at the time that it only happened once, they proactively email you about it. So you don't have to go hunting around on some website and try to find, like, or call them, God forbid, and, right. and find out if it's a known issue. <laughs> right. You're not being so gaslit by the status website. Or <laughs> yeah. Currently, I have had issues this evening, and I got an email about 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago saying that they're acknowledging that they're having issues. So we'll see how this goes. Nice. Well, it's very honest of them. It, that's a good point. I mean, that's where it comes from. I, God, it makes such a difference, though. Yeah, you don't feel like you're going, we'll talk about it when I get to my picks. I had to upgrade some of the Wi-Fi in my house. But I was going crazy because I had good speeds in my house. Not quite what I was being promised, but definitely good enough. But I was having devices constantly, like, shifting in speed all the time, back and forth. It was going up and down and up and down, and stuff was, like, disconnecting and connecting. And it was just mm -hmm. really unreliable, and it can be frustrating when you don't know. It took me a while. I had to diagnose where the problem was coming from. Yeah, I was where, was it, where was it coming from? Or we'll get, we'll get to that later. Well, I can give you the the problem before I tell you about the solution in the pick segment. But uh, the problem was just that I have at any given moment thirty plus active Wi Fi devices in my house in a two story eighteen hundred square foot house. Um, that my router, while newer and decent, uh, just could not handle both the distance and the the quantity. Because I was getting, as soon as I plugged directly into the modem, I was getting full speeds. So it wasn't an ISP issue. Yeah. I think Utah, so Utah will recall from the uh, the last show where we were all together, where I was gone for like 25 minutes. <laughs> in the middle. Yeah, where you just disappeared, yes. Yeah, I've also been having weird network problems. Um. Not exclusively while doing it, don't panic, but exclusively while video conferencing in some form or fashion. But the, mm. well, I got, I, I mean, we'll see in my picks. I got a giant Ethernet cable that r now runs from the cable hookup, which is at the farthest point in the apartment from my desk and uh, over to my desk. And so far it seems better, but it's weird, like... I mean, I have the I have the same like weird prosumer router that Dan has, that has a lot of like has all kinds of metrics and graphs mm -hmm. and things, and it seemed like I think what's happening. So I also tried this, but I think what's happening is that there are there are just too many routers in my immediate vicinity. Yeah, and, and like for some reason, sometimes like the the like five gigahertz signal would just get like totally squashed and you could see it in the graphs like sometimes it just didn't tell you like i don't know how to know what is happening so i tried to set my like apparently like newer routers can use bands that are like reserved for like radars As long as there are no radars around, like they have a way to detect if there's radar happening. I mean, if, there's I mean, no, if there's no radar, they can use these bands for Wi-Fi. So I switched. Meanwhile, to... the uh, the self-driving car down the street swerves into into the building. Yes. Oh no! <laughs> so, 
Um, but there's no, I assume that's like, uh, you know, remember, um, Joe used to have the, uh, like a radar detector in his car. And every time we would drive by stop and shop on, 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 on the highway, it would, it would go off because they had automatic doors with their, <laughs> the radar thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I switch it to that. I'm going to see if it works so far today. The thing, the little like, whoop, didn't happen, but I'm also plugged in. So I don't, I don't really notice anymore. Um, yeah. I, I appreciate that you and I took opposite solutions here where you went with the most wired solution and I with, went with the most wireless solution. Uh, but honestly, I think your next step, Colby, if it doesn't work is to line all your wall, ceiling and floors with copper mesh, you know, block out all of those signals. Now your cell phone won't work. Unfortunately, but yeah. you'll have great Wi-Fi within it. That's why you get one of those cell phone repeaters that connects. There you go. That's your own cell phone. Exactly. Network. I'll just like pop it out the window or like I'm on the top floor. I could drill a hole in the ceiling. Hey, <laughs> that's perfect. Was this, is this the Wi-Fi AI thing, Colby? So I didn't. I I saw that while I was poking it around in the settings for that. I haven't turned that on. I just went in, you can like manually select the, got it. You know, like the, what band you want it to use. Um, but it does, it does have a thing where it like, it does like a scan. It's it spends like five minutes, like, like, like watching all every, whatever's happening on the, on the Wi-Fi networks. And it shows you these nice band, like graphs of like the different bands and like how full they are. Or like mm -hmm. how much activity there is on each one, which is what I, I did that. And I was like, oh, maybe it's that. And I just, you know, picked one that had no, like nothing on it. But I don't know. We'll see. Cool. I'll report back. I don't know. I, I didn't take that networking class in college, so I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it, it is all coming home to roost for me these past couple of weeks, actually, at work. Is it? Uh. Yeah, so we are going through a security audit, and I've been tasked with fixing a bunch of these things. And one of the things is like, hey, uh, these resources should only be accessible from these other like things on the network. Like, how do you do that? Uh, well, there's a bunch. There's like really two different. There's you need to understand those, the slash notation in the, the IP address thing. Have you ever seen this? So it's like 192.168.1.1 slash 36. Yeah. Um, which was all stuff I learned in networking class and have long since forgotten. It's something to do with math. Um, it's not divided by. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it's complicated, man. It's extremely simple, uh, and it also very complicated. It's one of those, right. one of those like closure things. It's like all these rules are very simple, but taken in aggregate, it's like oh my god, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> Don't get me started. Actually, maybe we haven't talked about AWS. I have learned so much about AWS recently, and it's hundreds and hundreds of different services. And I likened it on Twitter to like starting Game of Thrones in season six. Like, you don't know like what's going on. You don't know why any of these things are important. Never mind the history behind any of them. And you're just asked like, oh yeah, like this is like security group version three. And it has to do all these things. I'm like, well, what, what about, well, what happened to version one and two? Like, what, what was wrong with those? Like, I don't know. You weren't here, man. You weren't here <laughs> for versions one and two. Those were the dark days. Yeah. And I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to understand. Yeah. Well, this, you know, I thought a while, this was a while back. I never brought it up. It was a fleeting idea, but I thought it would be very fun to take, to force Colby to do the AWS challenge, where we oh. see how many AWS features he can integrate into the Don't Panic website. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If Colby can integrate the, the AWS satellite launching feature... Oh, um, cool. I'll give him 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do <laughs> now, it. Now, I'm inclined to think that launching a satellite costs more than $50. <laughs> it doesn't have to like, be a big yes. one. Just a little model rocket. It doesn't have to be a big one. <laughs> uh, 
That's amazing. Let me find that. AWS satellite thing. AWS ground station. Yes. Ground station. Fully managed service that lets you control satellite communications, process data, and scale your operations without having to worry about or manage your own ground station infrastructure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Dan, fair. I've already got a ton of ground station infrastructure. What am I going to do with all of it? <laughs> I've already invested. <laughs> A global network of antennas. It's global. Think of the antennas. <laughs> now, did uh, you two see hey, this? For, for did... a narrow band uh, connection, it's only $3 per minute. So you could get like a solid like 18, 17 minutes. <laughs> and does that mean like our voices beam from space like a god? Is that how that works? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is narrow band? Any pass where the instantaneous bandwidth is less than 54 megahertz. Oh, my voice is pretty deep. I think it goes goes more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we used to pay for cell phones by the minute? We used to pay Incre- I remember when you used to pay per text message. Yeah, I was just thinking about that the yeah. other day. Yeah. I remember having unlimited data the first time before it became not unlimited and then unlimited again. Have we reverted back to not unlimited again? Uh, no, I think they're pushing unlimited, but now it's unlimited plus perks to get you to pay even more. Because now it's unlimited and you get free Apple Music and free Hulu and free whatever you want. We'll throw it in free. Oh, by the way, it's like $300 a month. <laughs> right, it's free. It's a great scam. It's a great scam. Yes. No, I remember I remember two-year contracts. I remember getting a new free phone when you signed a two-year contract. Yeah. Can you believe two years? That's crazy. Yeah. Do they still do that? No. Is, not really. So I've assumed, I've lived my life under the assumption that T-Mobile was the cheapest phone plan I could, I could have as it, as it, the cheapest, like reasonable phone plan that I could have as a, as a one person buying a phone plan, but I haven't checked that assumption. in. it depends years. what you mean by reasonable. Uh, those third party cell phone networks are extremely cheap. Lena, Lena uses one of them. I forget which one she uses. She pays yeah. like $25 a month. It does not have unlimited data. That's the only thing. Can can I put in a plug? Colby, who you've got Comcast, right? Yes, I do. Xfinity Mobile. I've got uh, both my parents on it. And it's like 30 bucks a month for unlimited, but it uses Verizon's network. Hmm. I mean, I do have I do have their non you know, their wired internet. Yeah, it's it's Maybe. it's that bundling. Where you save. So that's, I've told a bunch of people. Now they kind of deprioritize it against Verizon traffic. I've noticed right. rarely, but it has happened where it gets a little slow. But overall, I've been, for, for the price, it's really good. Is that unlimited that's the trick, data? Is you just got to know what network they run on. Right. Where it's like, is it visible? Is another one that runs on Verizon's network that's supposed to be very good? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. But it's whatever network is best where you live. Yeah. One thing I do like about T-Mobile is the price has not changed the entire time I've had it. Definitely. So, it, like, it's still whatever, like, sixty nine nine that I pay. Maybe it's gone up, like, a single dollar. I mean, how much mobile data do you use in a month? I'm probably none now. <laughs> that's, yes, there's no mobile in your life, right. so, yes. Historically, I used to use, like, I don't know, like, some gigs. Nowadays, nothing. Yeah, that's what I, it's a little different today, but what I found was back when I was on Wi-Fi a lot that you can get those one or two gigabyte a month plans and turns out you don't need unlimited. And then that's, you're at like the $15, $20 price point there. Maybe I'll do that. That is one of my larger bills. Yeah, think about it. We'll see. Take, take the random carrier challenge. Unrelated, I was going to say before when we were talking about satellites, the did you see the rumor that um, the iPhone 13 will have like a like a satellite receiver thing, be able to send send text messages via satellite? 
Not only did I see it, I put it in the rundown. Oh, like see, I didn't. I didn't look. <laughs> this ah! is the most seamless transition to tech news we've ever it's, done. Colby's reading my mind. I love it. Yes. Um. Uh, a famous Apple analyst, uh, Ming Chi Kyo, uh, is claiming that the iPhone 13 could have the ability to make satellite calls built right in. What it has to do, uh, it has to do with different um, uh, broadband uh, spectrum and what the modem in the phone can access. Uh, they think it's going to be able to connect directly to low Earth orbit satellites thanks to a customized Qualcomm X60 baseband chip. Now, uh, low Earth orbit or LEO satellites are things like uh, Elon Musk Starlink, which you may have heard of, but there's also HughesNet, OneWeb, Amazon's doing it, Emirostat. There are a bunch of companies trying to put these low uh, Earth orbit satellites, but they have to put like a zillion of them and it helps prevent things like trees getting in the way because they're much closer. Um, the uh, Wait, how does that help with trees? Uh, it's a different band that doesn't have to go as far. Oh, okay. If that makes sense. Not really, but it sounds plausible. Yeah, it's pushing the limits of how I can explain it, but supposedly <laughs> low Earth orbit helps... Per- I mean, you can, if there's, like, concrete buildings and stuff, it's still an issue, but supposedly it's a little more robust. Um, and so, supposedly, um, there are different rumors that... It, this could mean a lot of things, right? The first is that uh, re- PC Mag reporter uh, and 5G expert talked about they can actually use this type of chip to have global 5G support, um, even if even if they never use it to reach satellites, because it uses an N53 band um, that would create more of a global 5G access to the phone, if that makes sense. Okay, that's one. Number two, and this was the later rumor that came out, is that you'll be able to do it in case of emergency, it's an emergency feature, one potentially being emergency message via satellite where you can text emergency services and emergency contacts even without a cell signal. Uh, they would be limited in length, um, and uh, it would push through even if you had do not disturb on, making sure it definitely got delivered. A different feature might be that users could report emergencies like a, a bow or a plane crash, a fire, something like that. You can send information such as location and your medical ID. Um, and notify emergency contacts at the same time. Um, although Bloomberg says even though the next phone might have the hardware, it probably won't be ready uh, even in 2022 to actually connect satellites because satellites aren't ready. Uh, yeah, I never thought that this would just be a an Apple-owned thing. Maybe not owned, but an Apple-operated thing and not something you have to pay extra for. Because there are you know satellite phones, people who go sailing have these for example and i think there's even satellite internet that works that way but it's super expensive and very slow well and that's that high orbit satellite and that's the difference is once the network of low earth orbit satellites are in place theoretically you need smaller uh dishes and antennas to connect to them it's Uh, easier to connect it's it's sort of like the difference between a cell tower and a gps satellite where both can track where you are but because there's a lot more cell towers on earth uh, then there are GPS satellites in the sky. Uh, it's more precise and has higher connectability. And so that's what this technology enables. Now, the question is, is Apple going to just put the modems in the phone and say it's we're future-proofing it, but there's nothing today? Or are they going to partner with one of these satellite companies to say, hey, eventually you're going to, through this company, you don't have to pay any extra, you have emergency communication? Or like you were suggesting, is it something Apple could potentially upcharge for? I mean that that would be very in their current MO. I'm I think all the time about was it I think when the original iPhone came out, one of their plans was that they were just gonna run their own be their own carrier. Yeah. Man. Ugh. What a world we would live in. <laughs> and by the way, they're big enough now. If they wanted to go buy T Mobile, they could. So <laughs> they won't. Regulators would never let that happen. Yeah. But, um vertical you know. integration. There's, I, it would not surprise me if they bought one of these satellite companies. Um, I think that would be an interesting positioning. I just think, as far as I understand the technology, 
like calls and messaging to a sat lowered satellite from the phone is very doable today. Data transfer isn't the technology isn't quite there. So I think it would make sense today to put the chips in. Apple, we care about you. We care about you being safe. It's free. We're going to cover whatever the satellite charges are, kind of like GPS is, where it's like we don't charge you for that, even though it goes to fancy satellites in the sky. We're going to do that. That's because it's a federally operated service, well, that, right? Right. But that's what I'm saying. They're going to treat it like that. And they're going to say this is just a service we're going to offer, whether they buy the satellites or they lease them. Then I think a couple of years down the road, when the technology gets better, then they say the emergency stuff is free. But if you want to do calls and messages to your friends and family, you could pay us for the privilege to do that. That's a, a total guess. But I would I would think the emergency stuff, I'd be shocked if they charged for that. Mm hmm. At worst, I think they'd bundle it in with Apple One or something. But um, mm. I, I, that seems to me like a gimme. Can you imagine kids these kids these the kids being born now are never going to know a world where you don't have cell service? Do you know what I learned today? What'd Maybe I sound stupid because I didn't ever think about this. Did you know that before nine eleven, airlines didn't have baggage fees? I saw that. Did you see that going around today? Yes. No. I, I literally like. I knew they went up, but they were instituted right after nine eleven to help theoretically keep the airline industry afloat. They were only meant to be temporary. And now I'm really mad about that. I thought they always had them. I saw it with inflation; they got expensive. Damn it! Wow. I I knew that they didn't use to charge for bags, like, but I never really connected that with the baggage fees, per se. Like, hey, you always used to get one free bag. But isn't it more recent that you started to get like tickets to have zero free bags? Yeah, that was like the last five years. Like, well, like post COVID, every like that's what people used to laugh at Spirit for doing. But now it's every airline. You like anything you want to take on the plane, you get charged extra for, <laughs> no matter where you're putting it. Yep. Yeah. That's really wild. So anyway, kids will never know a, a, a time without airline baggage fees, and they'll never know a time without a device constantly connecting them to everything everywhere all the time. I think this is really cool. There have been lots of situations where I would have paid money to be able to have guaranteed phone calls, even. To me, I, I don't think a lot of people put Apple and Android next to each other a lot and say, hmm, which should I choose? Usually people are pretty baked in by now, but... This would be a massive benefit to the Apple ecosystem and iPhones compared. I don't know how Google, uh, unless they go and, you know, spend a bunch of money trying to compete. But this is such a selling point to anybody who buys these. Yeah. yeah. It does seem like, though, like, I mean, if Apple can do it, then presumably anyone else is not that far behind, right? Yeah. I mean, that's... That's my question, and that's why I thought the angle of, no, they're actually putting the chips in the phone for a wider 5G range, and so they can put one chip in for global 5G. That makes a little more sense, because the more I hear about the satellite low-Earth orbit stuff, it seems not quite fully baked yet, like in another year or two maybe, but it seems yeah. early. So I think if they put the chips in, I think this year they say it's for expanded 5G, and then two years from now, they say that phone you bought two years ago <laughs> right. already has the chip in it. It's going to work with the satellite. Space I'd phone. be shocked if you hear satellite service this year. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I don't know. That's cool. It is cool. Yeah. I remember, I think it was like the, it's got to be like one of the Jurassic Park movies where like one of them is like on a boat and like trying to make a phone call on a satellite phone. I like distinctly remember that from my childhood. And it's like the phone's like this big and it has like a oh, big yeah. antenna that sticks out the top. Maybe it's probably Jurassic Park 2. Not a very good Jurassic Park. Yeah, I don't even no. know if I've seen that Jurassic Park. What, what's the plot of that one? <laughs> I don't know. There was like... They go back to the island, and there's, like, a truck that, like, almost falls off a cliff, and there's a T-Rex, and... Uh, they run it back, basically. Well, I was yeah. going to say, this sounds like every Jurassic Park movie. Okay. It's, it's you know, it hits all the, hits all the high points. Did you I know ever all those tell dinosaurs you guys we left on that island? We got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember what the... Like, there was a reason they went, they went back for something, and it's something that was... Vaguely important. I don't know. 
Do they leave their car keys? <laughs> Probably. That was that was another Jurassic Park one, and I think that Jurassic Park two as well were both movies that my parents like VHS taped off of the television for us to yeah. watch. Yeah. And the first one, the first one for like we had it for ages, and my my sister and I were like pretty young, and we never made it past the scene where the T Rex like terrorizes the people in the jeeps because it was too scary. So we'd watch the first like thirty minutes of the movie, and then just where it's, where it's the nice dinosaur <laughs> park. Yes, that's great. <laughs> it was just too scary. Where are you gonna? Play? I love. I love movies. My grandfather was a prolific VHS. He must have had over a hundred tapes with all kinds of movies on them. And then it wasn't until many years later, all of the like PG 13 R rated movies that had scenes cut for TV where I'd seen the movie a hundred times and I get the DVD and I'm like, when did they add these scenes in? <laughs> well, Sean, that was the Willy Wonka was one of like the original Willy Wonka was one of those movies that we we had a bootleg copy of and when my parents were taping them they would try and cut out the commercials and so one night they were trying to tape Willy Wonka and they tried to cut out one of the commercials and during a commercial they fell asleep and like woke up during the next commercial so we for for years we had seen a version of Willy Wonka where they never drank the the fizzy lifting drink so when he was super mad at them the kid at the end it just didn't make any sense it's like you didn't do anything wrong leave him alone why are you so angry amazing it's very confusing that's that that's like I, when i watch you know caddyshack or airplane or some of these movies i'm like i don't remember there being so many topless women in these <laughs> or national lampoon's vacation is another one like i don't remember there being nudity in this it's like oh there wasn't i cut that out yep wild different times i'll never forget when you watched uh true detective in the opposite order <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> on, on the the, the uh... wow you've, the... you've had a bad run with understanding visual media it sounds like this goes way back <laughs> right like uh like uh i don't know like just jumbled up experiences weird time <laughs> i wonder what the next one is gonna be <laughs> it can't get any worse than tr watching true detective backwards <laughs> right well it's not like that show is like in any particular order or serialized or anything <laughs> no not at all <laughs> um gosh we are the worst um all right any other uh any other tech news here that uh, you guys want to talk about? I also brought, um, I brought, I, I'm going to start doing this because I always worry we don't have enough tech news. So I have an emergency game on standby. I'm going to have it every week. So in case we feel there's not enough content, we can pull the lever and eject out to an emergency game. But we may not be there yet. So is there another story in here you'd like to talk about? We should talk about the, the China gaming addiction one. Yeah, you bet. Uh, I know you guys like to spend, I don't know, eight, 10 hours a day playing online video games, not for kids in China. Uh, regulators, uh, in China have, uh, invoked new rules on Chinese gaming platforms that must limit online gaming to minors to just three hours per week. It's part of a broader crackdown, um, on, uh, a growing concern around gaming addiction, children under the age of 18 will now be restricted to one hour of gaming between 8 PM and 9 PM on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on public holidays, that's a change from the previous limit of one and a half hours of online gameplay for most days. It's up to the gaming companies to restrict this play outside of those hours, uh, using a real name verification system to make sure the rules are enforced. Uh, regulators also say they'll work with parents and schools to help combat gaming addiction among Chinese youth. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I saw people talking about this online today, and it's it's uh, on the one hand, you know, we didn't have this, we didn't have these problems. But on the other hand, the games that we grew up with were, were very different. They were not designed for maximum engagement. Right. Uh, Nintendo doesn't make any more money 
if you spend another hour playing Super Mario. Yeah. I had, when I was young, I was only allowed to computer for one hour a day. And now look what happened. <laughs> right now. I, now and he I'm spent all that time in Microsoft and Carta just learning. They drove me to it. <laughs> You yeah, did this, it's... Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it from you, okay? Uh, no, you know, it's 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 funny. My, uh, my my mother has gotten really into this, like, little cooking game on her on her device, and then she gets mad when she doesn't have enough boosters and power-ups and all this. And, and she's like, Sean, I don't know why I can't stop playing this game. And I'm like, because it's designed for you to not want to stop playing the game. Like, it really is. I'm not... I generally try not to be like a technology's bad for you. We should restrict it kind of guy. But more and more, these devices are being made with the intention of become, you know, it's the cigarette issue where is it more important to have the freedom to buy cigarettes or at some point should we put limits and restrictions around it? Cause it's bad for the general public health. Yeah. <sighs> now should a, mm -hmm. should a, oppressive communist government get credit for doing it? Probably not. I mean, there's a reason why they can just say it and the companies have to do it. Um, but at what point do you guys think there might be a reckoning here in the States? Never. Uh, well, I was, another thing I saw on Twitter over the weekend was uh, that like in the last 20 years, this is a country that in the last 20 years basically banned smoking from any sort of public place, yep. even a restaurant. Could you imagine us doing that today? Could you imagine smoking getting banned in 2021? Yeah. It never happened. So, no, I don't, I, I don't think it'll happen. I would, if this became a thing, I, a part, a sort of, like, removed part of me would be entertained to see how it became like a divisive political issue. Cause that's what would happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. I don't, you, I can't be the, uh, the pro, the, the pro gamer Republicans. Play more games. Government wants to shut down your games. <laughs> Get in there. Do the Fortnites. Uh, no, I I think it's interesting, but you know, bringing up cigarettes is really interesting. I think a seatbelt's kind of the same way, right? Where for a long time everyone thought seatbelts they didn't wear them or didn't, and then eventually we got every almost everyone to do it. But those are physical things. That's what's really interesting to me. Like either you put on the seatbelt or you don't. You smoke a cigarette or you don't. But what is an online game? How do you restrict something that doesn't have a physical? Like they can physically stop the shipment of cigarettes, right? How do you stop? The, the the again the only reason China could do it is because they have such a tight control over private and public industry. I, I Although, just think you know that that's not what they did for smoking. You can still go to the store and buy cigarettes. Well, but they, just, you they can't smoke them anywhere. Physical packaging changes. They forced them to oh, physically right. be locked behind a cabinet. And I think, I just think defining what is an online game and putting boundaries around it, I think, is much tougher than an easily defined physical product. It does seem complicated. I wonder, though, like, is there a is there a difference between like smoking and games, and in, in that, like, smoking in a public place does like it affects the people, other people, right? Like, like secondhand smoke is is bad for you in. in you know, demonstrably science, science has proven, has proven this is, is second, our second is secondhand gaming bad for you. I don't know. Well, uh, Colby, this isn't it. This is an intervention. Dan and I are here to talk about how your online gaming addiction has affected us. <laughs> okay? We're your friends. We miss the old Colby, the one who used to smoke cigarettes and not wear seatbelts. <laughs> right. <laughs> the one who knew how to have fun. Yes. Good. Now you're a nerd. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that's a that's a very fair point. You know, at, at at what point is there an incentive to actually do something about it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any kids either. So, now yeah, that's their lives yeah. are being ruined by. by online I mean, kids. again, it's the other interesting part is that companies like Apple are trying to put up 
parental controls and boundaries to some degree. Like if you're bought into the Apple ecosystem, you can limit how many hours your child accesses gaming apps. I mean, the technology exists. There's just no regulation from the government to do <laughs> something about it. Right. Very American. Yeah. Wild. Now, is it something about the phone too, where I've noticed uh, some people, I won't name names, have gotten addicted to phone games that aren't even like the online games. They're not even, uh, they're not ha having you buy gems and timing you out and stuff like that. It's just that it's always there. You can always play threes. You can always check Twitter. Like I think there's like the social media addiction thing uh, relates to this too. Is it, maybe it's not the design of the services itself, but just the ubiquity of the access where used to be if you wanted to go and check AIM, you'd have to be at your computer. You'd only be at your computer for so long, even if it was like 10 hours. Yeah. There'd be times you're not at your computer. But now even if you're at, at dinner, you can quickly take out your phone, check Twitter, check Instagram. Yeah. That started to feel like an addiction. I think it's a little of both. Like, like partially it's that. Like you can always check, but it's also partially like there's always more, right? Like, if you like go on Instagram, they're always going to show you more stuff. You the know, feed. you get to, you get to the end, and then they show you like recommended stuff. <laughs> um, you know, it never ends if you don't want it to end. Yeah, I, I think the other big piece of it too is is the dynamic analytics part of it. You know, I knew people back in the day who playing Bejeweled in the browser. Mm -hmm. on, on their desktop, they could do that for hours and hours, but it was always a dumb game. It played the same way every time. Uh, the, the difference is nowadays the game will actually change and contort and will use data against you to create a game that is specifically addictive to Dan. It'll notice your play habits. The developers will notice your play habits and change the game to become essentially more addicted. That's, to me, the biggest difference, is I can make a game that people are, think is fun and they spend a lot of hours playing. I mean, how, how long does it take to play through Skyrim? I mean, it's, it's a lot of hours. But the difference is it's not constantly evolving and pushing those buttons on the player to say, okay, we had you hooked yesterday on A, today we're going to hook you on B, and tomorrow we're going to hook you on C. And it never stops. And, th and that's only because of the processing power and the permanent connectivity of these devices. Yeah. Yeah, I remember back in 2001, you had the stories of the people addicted to EverQuest, right? Uh, that was relatively few people. Uh, but is there anything like what's di is there anything different between EverQuest, World of Warcraft, and whatever Farmville du jour today? Roblox? Have you seen Roblox? Well, Roblox is a, that's a whole different beast, What is that? right? I don't know what that is. Okay, so I don't know that much about it, but I'm going to I have read no out. like primary sources, but here's my understanding. Sorry, what is this called? Roadblox? Roblox. R O B L O X. It's like Minecraft, Roblox. right? Okay. It's Roblox is like Minecraft, but Imagine if in Minecraft you could make a whole other game and then put it on the Roblox store and I think even sell it. Um, and you can do all of this from within Roblox. So it's a kind of like the, you know, the metaverse that Mark Zuckerberg thinks is a, a little more second life -y maybe a little second life. -y. But second life, like second life didn't allow you to modify the rules of second life. Whereas I think mm -hmm. Roblox is kind of like a programming environment that people can exist in and you can sell your programs that are always games. And it's uh, focused to children. Yes. The, the only thing I from inside the game, the only yeah, it's uh, it comes with a rating of ages seven and up, which is kind mm -hmm. of upsetting when you read. I read a story the other day about how they're having a problem because people keep recreating mass shootings in Roblox, and Roblox <laughs> keeps trying to shut them down, and they keep doing it. And I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a bummer. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it seems like a great creative outlet. Uh, but of course, with sufficient freedom, you, you can do anything. Um, but yeah, I guess that like, right. Like 
what I'm getting at is if if EverQuest and if Roblox are also these addictive online games, and they're addictive only because that they're sufficiently interesting, right? That they change a lot, and that there's a lot of stuff to do. Then, like, isn't it really just the internet that is addicting? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think the combination of gameplay and purchasing mechanics, I think, are what really take it to that next level. Because I think you're right, Dan. If you're that Minecrafty style of just it's an open world, go nuts, have fun, kids. Like, yeah, okay, you have a lot of fun, you want to play it a lot. I, I wouldn't consider that addicting. It's the difference between smoking tobacco and a cigarette, where theoretically just smoking tobacco pure on its own is not addictive. It's when you add the nicotine and the tar and all the other stuff to it that it becomes mm -hmm. dangerous. To me, that's when you go to like a Fortnite or something where there are game mechanics that can be messed with. There's purchasing mechanics that can be messed with, right? The coins and the gems and the loot crates and all that kind of stuff is where you can really screw with, with people's, uh, uh, th their, their minds. Weird. And that's why I'm suing the gaming industry. <laughs> Good for you. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, me, a guy who still plays Sudoku on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Have you all Sudoku. ever thought about doing a social media hiatus? Just, I mean, I, Colby is, seems maybe the closest of, of the three of us. Yeah. At least from outward appearances. I, I, I peruse Instagram. I don't look at Twitter. I... I don't know. I don't know if it was just like the world happened to Twitter or I like made some some missteps in my like followings on Twitter. But I when I try my I've I've tr I've tried to go back a couple times and I just I don't like it. It doesn't yeah. uh, hold my attention, which is why, Dan, you totally did you. I don't know if you listened to the show this week, but this the we were talking about. Twitter and I, I decided I need to I don't want to go on Twitter, but I do need to see the things that you and Sean post on Twitter. So I'm I'm <laughs> I'm building a thing that lets me subscribe to your Twitters on RSS. Um, oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's a thing it, you can do it online, but they want to charge you money for it. So right. I'm just, I might as well pay five dollars a month and host my own. Um but I forgot what I was saying. I do. I do look at Instagram. I rarely post on Instagram, but occasionally I do. Yeah, I got your garden photos. Yeah, but I still look like multiple times a day. Like I look mm -hmm. when I get when I wake up, and I don't want to get up yet. And yeah, I, it's a, it's a, it's Instagram's less of a fire hose for me. Yes, it's more like a garden sprinkler. Well, the thing the thing about Instagram is like. I don't care about their recommendations. So when I hit the bottom where it says like, you're done, I'm actually done. Yeah. Which is, I, I I've never seen that on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at Mr. I follow a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's my problem. Right. Maybe you just have too many friends. Could be mm -hmm. tough, yeah. tough stuff. I have a, I, I am, I am absolutely hundred percent in on Twitter and it's not good. It's really not. I while we were talking, that's what I was looking at on my phone. I wasn't being rude. I was pulling up the uh, screen time, uh, mm -hmm. because I spend on average between one to two hours a day on Twitter, which is like a lot. That does seem and like a lot. It's too much. But I will say, when there's like a week. If there's like I'm busy or I'm traveling, like I don't crave it, like I don't miss it when I miss it. But unless there's like an obvious reason not for me to be constantly looking, I'm constantly looking at Twitter. It's not great. So no, I could I give it up for a day or two, sure. If you wanted me to go like a month without Twitter, I just I don't think I could. Now speaking of screen time, have you tried the like limits? No, because I don't want to be limited. That's my thing. It hasn't, hasn't disrupted my phone. No, because honestly, if you look at my screen time, there's exactly two apps that use up the vast majority of my screen time, and that's TweetBot and Overcast. And really? and I'm okay with that. 
because I have nothing else going on in my life. And I will say the thing about Twitter for me is it's not a lot of stupid shit. Like I get a ton of news. Like I do learn things on Twitter. So I don't feel Instagram to me is a little different, but at least on Twitter, I follow a lot like with Afghanistan and COVID and all this kind of stuff. Like I do feel more tuned in. If I stopped following Twitter, I wouldn't know what's going on in the news. See, so mine, my, my two hour thing is Firefox. And most of what I look at in the browser is like, I look at, like the globe, the Boston globe or um, like the New York times or whatever. So I guess that's my, that's my Twitter, you know, that's my proxy for your thing is I just refresh the newspaper website. Yeah. I never read anything because I don't pay for either of those things. But that's interesting. Oh, I was going to say, so you don't use like the New York times app. No, I, I don't like it. Cause if I really want to read something on the newspaper website, I can like open open the the article in a private tab and read it. Um, but I can't pay for either of them because they've both done the same thing to me, where I had to call them on the phone to cancel my subscription, and I I'm mad about it. Gotcha. So, yeah. Wow. What's your What's your top top screen time app, Dan? Uh, I was just looking. Are you doing it by day, Sean? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's there because they're so far ahead of everything else. It doesn't matter how I look at it. <clears throat> Let me look at the week. I didn't use my phone a lot today, apparently. Yeah, it's hard because the week just started. It's kind of not. There isn't a huge. What? Like... It doesn't do the last seven days? No. Are you kidding me? No, but you can go back to like this previous weekend or <sighs> if, if you go to the day view and scroll down, a little thing comes up so you can go to past days. I see. Uh, oh, same with weeks. You can do past weeks. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, like here in this week, I did about seven hours on TweetBot in the week and about five hours in Overcast and everything else was an hour and a half or less. Let's see. I want to see like a heat map of this. Like I want days of the week and like the apps that I'm using. A lot. The data is mm-hmm. very cool. It says here I picked up a uh, 166 times on average per day. Of that 166, 142, I opened and went directly to Twitter. <laughs> I need a life. Wow. This yeah, is- I, Twitter is my number one uh, at about three hours, followed by Safari at two hours. Followed by Instagram at one hour. Followed by Reddit at 30 minutes. My first use after pickup is Safari. I don't know why that is. Mine is messages after pickups. Which makes sense. That's very healthy. Is Firefox. Then overcast. This is when you lie, Colby, and you're like, well, it says here it's the yoga app, and then it's the breathe app. And it's Duolingo. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's anyway, I, I'm considering uh I'm considering my options here. I don't know. I don't know if I like Twitter either. I like Twitter and I don't. I think Twitter's Twitter was really make fun it. six years ago. But I think that's about following the right people, though. I do kind of get – because if you do Twitter in a, in a non-Twitter app like I do in TweetBot or something, you can really get a pretty organic feed without all the nonsense. And at that point, unlike a Facebook, which will cram God knows what into your feed, like you really get to choose what you see. You just got to be really diligent about unfollowing and making sure you're, you know, being you good know, I, I should try that because a lot of it – I don't know. Maybe a lot of it is the, uh, you know, oh, this was liked by this, you yes. know, this person and stuff. Yeah, it's a pain. Yeah. I, I, I haven't used the Twitter default app in a decade. Um, and I use TweetBot. I know there are others, but it's it's made a huge difference for me. Mm. This, this raises an interesting question. If you two were using a service that let you RSS subscribe to people on Twitter... Would you want to think want to see a things that they retweeted and or b things that they like tweets that were just replies to someone else's tweet? Are you like raising money for your startup or something <laughs> no, here? I'm just, I'm just these. 
These are questions I was asking myself two days ago. Uh, I don't I care it, about replies. Yeah, I was going to say That's replies seem very unlikely. Retweets? I don't know. I have to think about that. I would like the ability to toggle retweets per account. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because there true. definitely are accounts where I'm like, I trust them and they retweet good shit. Makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, speaking of RSS, I have been using Colby, your pick from last week, Reader. Reader. And it's been great. Reader. Did you been try awesome. Net Newswire, Colby? Net Newswire? No. I didn't I've never heard of that. You should check it out. Net Newswire. It is an old school very simple, very fast Mac and iOS, I think, app. Yes. For RSS reading. Yeah, that's I I definitely remember that name from way back. Well now I'm gonna get mad if Colby got me to pay like what four ninety nine for reader and then there was a this one's I wanna free. send you a bill. Damn it. I I didn't know. I'm gonna try this one too. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Um, I, I tried Reader a long time ago, and uh, then I, I gave up on RSS, and then I tried Net Newswire. So I, I never did like a head-to-head comparison. Right, it was like five years separated. I mean, this looks nice. now. Do you want to get like iOS notifications of RSS stuff, or do you visit your RSS thing? No, I visit my RSS thing. I think my my. I wouldn't want a notification. I'm okay with like the little numbers popping up on the on the app. That's got it. Um, but I visit. I I like look. I I've added that to. I've added reader to my my cycle of things that I like look at when I pick up my phone and I'm procrastinating. All right, you've inspired me, Colby. I'm gonna try to. Because so much of what I use Twitter for is like, oh, here's this cool article or this like new app that people are talking about. I'm going to try to re-RSSify myself. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how to find new apps. I haven't seen a new app in, I don't know, three years. Um, But a new app that I haven't Googled for, that's crazy. Um, I guess we talked about this. This Don't Panic is my is my. (laughs) <laughs> source of new apps. You heard about Clubhouse from us? <laughs> I've heard about Clubhouse, yes. I I do have a club. I guess I didn't. Maybe I heard about Clubhouse from... Uh, I Maybe on Dubai Friday. I bet that's where I heard about Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. You, you did uh, picture this. Picture this. Oh, yeah. that's a. I heard about that from a person in real life. A what? I know a person I didn't even really know. <laughs> it's just one of the like garden people when when we got the garden. Wow. Apps. Well, uh, a a a great conversation. I think we really solved a lot of the world's problems, <laughs> folks. Uh, go and just I think I think we can all agree. Just let your kids do whatever they want online. You don't have to pay yeah, attention. Nothing bad yeah. happens on the internet. They're they're fine. Look, you uh, uh, to all of our. I mean, they they grew up in the '80s with cocaine and stuff. It's the same thing. So don't worry about it. Um, but we do have to move on to picks. It's part of the show where just bring something we want to share. We've teased a number of these. Wait, quick uh, question. Quick question. Yes. Whatever. Ha- so are we doing this uh, VR thing? Is this on the schedule? Did this come up in the show last week. Yeah. That also so came up in the show. Yeah. The the short version is that we talked about Facebook's new uh, work rooms. Uh, right. which that they announced at Colby and I said, gosh, it would be really cool to see if we could do the show from a workroom. Uh, but we'd all have to get headsets. And then we looked into like, oh, you can rent them and stuff. And I just haven't done the Googling required to see if you can like live stream slash record off of a workroom. And also if it'll work on my M1 Mac, which I'm suspicious it won't. So um, I, I have right, to do more Windows Googling. computer's dead. It, it, it's in pieces, literally. I... I'm willing to bet it will work on your M1 Mac. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, um, it, I also don't know if you have to 
get invited to uh, work mm. workspaces or not. It's, it seemed like I did a bunch of looking at the thing. It seemed like a like the workrooms connection to your computer d- is not the same as like plugging your your Oculus into a computer and using it as like you know the graphics card or whatever it's like a different thing it sounded like it's like an app that you in a separate completely separate app that you install and mm. lets you do like the screen mirroring thing or something um yeah it's in the oculus store yeah and then i don't know about recording the show though i have no idea about that just no idea. all right well all right, i will cool. commit just want to check in by next week, I promise I will come in with the technical answer of whether or not we can do it. Ooh, exciting. Okay. I mean, we could just hang out as friends, but it would be more fun if we could, uh, <laughs> right. you know, record it and turn it into a gimmicky thing. So that would be great. And I'm definitely on board with, with renting a set. So, yeah. I honestly, I'm thinking about just buying one and then returning it if I hate it. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I want to make my apartment. Just exactly my apartment as it exists, but in VR. I think that yeah. that's the Mark Zuckerberg dream, right? And Why be I... in your apartment if you could be in your virtual apartment? <laughs> well, I could virtually rearrange my furniture instead of actually rearranging my furniture. Now that is a good idea. It's taken me a lot of time and effort. I think we could do a whole series where we just review VR games and stuff. I think that'd be a hoot. What would we call Don't Panic in VR? Don't Panic. <laughs> don't, panic. don't panic 4D. Yes. Don't panic. Metaverse. Uh, uh, yes, into the metaverse. I love that. <laughs> um, well, that's good. I promise I will follow up with that um, and get some answers for you. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to share some picks here. Uh, Dan, because you have the non networking pick, why don't you go first? What have you got this week? <laughs> Uh, what did I pick again? Uh, oh yeah, WandaVision. Yeah, we watched WandaVision when there was a hurricane happening. Uh, neither of uh, I have watched most, but not all of the Marvel movies. Lena has watched almost none of the Marvel movies, but some of them. Uh, and we both really liked it. It was a lot of fun. It's like. It's a weird TV show, so you have to like weird TV shows, I think. But it's not... It's more weird than... I don't know what it's more weird than. It's less weird than Twin Peaks The Return. Uh, And more weird... Definitely more weird than, like, Game of Thrones or something like that. It's it's unusual. Is it more weird Uh, than, like... What was that? That... The superhero show on Hulu? Legion? Legion, yes. I would say it's about as weird as Legion. Maybe okay. a little bit less weird because Legion had, you know, there were no characters in it that you under, that you knew from other things. Right. I, I would uh, say it's got like that shiny Marvel veneer over the weirdness. Yeah, it's very well produced. It's like it looks super good. Um, and real quick, the premise is that like, oh, there's this. Uh, you don't really know why at first, but there's this TV show that is. That is kind of doing riffs on all the famous sitcoms through all the, through all the ages, uh, but also there are Mar- Marvel characters and there's something like sinister happening. Uh, it's a lot of fun. WandaVision. It's on Disney Plus. It's nine episodes of varying lengths. Nice. Oh, and make sure to watch the credits. So we pulled a little bit of a Colby because after the credits, in typical Marvel fashion, I didn't think they'd do this for a TV show, <laughs> are extremely important things that, that happen that make the next episode make sense. We didn't realize this until episode eight. That's really annoying. Every yeah, unfortunately, episode... they do it. The good news is they make it easy to kind of fast forward and uh, right. check it out. But it's great. You know, I watched that, like, the Loki show on Disney Plus, and I didn't, I don't think I watched the end of the credits, so maybe, uh... Oh, they definitely uh, had stuff in the credits. Actually, you know, I I did find myself feeling really annoyed that it kept playing, like, it didn't skip over the credits at the end of the the show and go to the next one. Maybe Uh. that's why I wasn't skipping over, man. (laughs) Damn. They got... Uh... Cool. Well, great pick. Uh, well, I look forward to your review of all the various uh, Disney Plus shows. 
should you watch them. Um, I will go next. Uh, I already teased it, so I won't go into too much detail. I had some Wi-Fi problems, so I went with a mesh network. Uh, Wirecutter's budget pick, the TP-Link Deco. I went with the S4. I've got three of the units scattered throughout my house, one where my router used to be in my living room, one here in my office that my laptop is actually hardwired into, which is cool, and then one uh, down below where my mother lives. And I have had uh, a big improvement in connection speed. You can go into the app. It will actually optimize which one it's best to connect each device to, and so they're not all loaded onto a single device. Um, And I really have genuinely noticed a better stability and consistency in the connection since I installed them. And it was like 150 bucks for the three of them. So um, they're not super fancy. The the charts and graphs and stuff intimidate me. So this one is like the one for dummies. It took me two seconds to set up. It was easy, but honestly uh, it really has made a pretty big difference. So uh, I definitely recommend the TP link deco S four uh, mesh Wi-Fi system. Nice. Now, Sean, you're not typically one to go for the budget pick. What, what inspired you to do that here? First of all, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. <laughs> um, but also, uh, the difference is that the, what, the basically the big difference between the budget and the full price is just how much network you can throughput on it. And it was like, my, my house, I get like 300 megabits is my connection from Comcast. And then it was like the budget topped out at 500 and the more expensive one went to a gigabit. Oh. And I was like, I'm never going to have gigabit. I don't need a gigabit. And I can save some money just getting, you know, and it didn't have some of the fancier like reporting features and stuff. Um, I just needed it to connect. So that's why I went with the more basic one. Yep. But good question. So that's the pick. Um, Colby, take us home. What do you got? My pick is the Monoprice Flexboot Cat 6 Ethernet patch cable snagless RJ45 stranded. 550 megahertz UTP pure bare copper wire 24 AWG 50 foot white. Wow. That's, that's I'm sorry, Colby, you, you cut out. Can you say that again? <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. As we, as we mentioned earlier in the show, I was also having network problems. And so I took the, <laughs> took the, the polar opposite approach of, that Sean did. And I just got a big ethernet cable and strung it across my apartment. It's surprisingly affordable. It was $9.99, this, this Ethernet cable that I purchased. They, they come in a variety of colors. They come in like useful increments of length from half a <laughs> foot all the way up to 100 feet. Like, just get one. What are you waiting for? <laughs> they come. Oh, I can get a red. I can get a bright red Ethernet cable. They got red. They got yellow. They got orange. They got green. They got blue. That, that's that's the guy. And you know when you see the rainbow of wires in somebody's house, then you know they've really <laughs> lost it. Yeah, they have pink and purple, but they're out of stock. At least in the fifty foot length. Oh, they're not in, in more modest lengths. So think about it. Oh, the pink looks completely out of stock to me, unless you get the half foot length. Oh, I also I got a switch. That was fun because I needed two plugs at my desk. My Mac Which Mini. Which one did you get? Oh, um, I don't know. It's whatever the one with eight Ethernet ports on Monoprice is. I really I got the eight eight port one because it was had faster like it it had cat six speeds or something. It was like a gigabit speeds and the other one was not. I don't think. Now, did you know that you can get ubiquity switches that let you do fancy stuff with your switches? Uh, yeah, but, um, I just don't, I, I only like just learned what a switch is. So I, I, <laughs> I wasn't feeling that ambitious there. <laughs> yeah. Um, someday though, maybe, maybe when I need it. I also am technically unemployed right now, so that's fair. That Primo hardware is out of reach. Out of reach. No, can't go wrong with uh, with some classic wires. Classic wires. Um, that's great. We'll have the link to that on the website, along with links to all of our picks. 
as always, you're going to want to check it out there. Um, all right. Anything else you guys would like to uh, say or do this evening? No, this was a fun one. Yeah, I think we actually we had some thoughtful discussion. Yeah, it does, this is what happens when you get our three brains together on the uh, on the old chat. Yes, sir. Um, awesome. Well, let's. Oh. Uh, yeah. Right, never mind. Nope. Nope. Last week, did you talk about that Ars Technica article about all the different um, Google Chat apps over the last like twenty five years? <laughs> no, that sounds really great, though. All right, I'll find it. Well, we can talk about it next week. Oh, yeah. I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, that's great. Well, of course, you should check out our website, don'tpanic.io. It'll soon be able to talk to satellites in space. Go there. Get links to all the picks in this week in Pickstory. You can, of course, uh, subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Just look for Don't Panic with the video version on YouTube. See us in our matching black T-shirts. And, of course, you can follow us at Don't Panic Show or email us, don'tpanicshow at gmail.com. We do read them when we get them. Uh, guys. We're going to put a pin in it here, uh, but we'll be back next week with more tech news and fun discussion. On behalf of Colby and Dan, I'm Sean. Thanks for being here. We'll see you then on another episode of Don't Panic.